All right, guys, 1,000 miles on our Harley Davidson Heritage Soft Tail. That is awesome. First off, I know for you, a lot of guys who've been riding motorcycles for a long time, that isn't a big deal. Some of you guys do that in a weekend, but this is my first real motorcycle. So this is like a big deal for me because the thousand miles included me learning how to ride this motorcycle, going through the different motions of doing an hour long ride, going up and down mountains and canyons, and just experience it in all types of different environments. So we're gonna tell you the truth and the ugly of what I've experienced with my Harley and my first thousand mile motorcycle experience. So first off, I love this bike. It is super, super smooth, cush, and comfortable. When I first rode the soft tail, I immediately fell in love with it. It's just really, really chill. Now, I've never ridden a sports bike, and the bike before this was a Honda Grom, so we could learn, and then before that was a scooter. So this is like my first experience with just bikes in general, but I really dig it. Now, I did test ride a bunch of motorcycles, and this one just felt the most comfortable to me. And the Softail is a really good motorcycle. Like, you, you just feel like you're on top of the world. You've got the wind hitting you. It, it has the right rumble. It does, it does vibrate. And, and it just, it looks beautiful. Like, I love the way this bike looks. It's super, super nice. So, learning on it has been pretty good. The only thing is, is that this is a lot heavier than you think. Like, you're like, all right, it's a motorcycle, but it's over 700 pounds. And I learned that recently. Now, I've been riding this motorcycle all over the place, and here, last week, I finally tipped it over. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't really a crazy event. I was trying to put my wallet back into my pants after I showed it to like the gate for the national parks here. And I leaned to the right, because I was trying to put it in there, and I must have, I wasn't thinking, and I leaned too much, and it just fell over. Like it was very slow, not very dramatic event. And I was like, all right, let me pick it up. Nope. <laughs> And then I went over and tried to do what they teach you in the class, and I was like, nope. And while I was trying to do what they were teaching me in the class, this couple pulled over and helped me uh, uh, pull it back up. But like, you know, the whole thing where you squat behind it and lift it up, I, I mean, yeah, you could do it, but it's, I need to practice that on my own. But the cool thing is, is that it fell all the way by right here, just a tiny little bit of a scratch. And that's why, I like the crash bars. I think that's like mandatory. If it wouldn't have had the crash bars, it would have, I feel like even it falling over just from a stop, it wouldn't have been good. So crash bars for the win, highly recommend it. Would not, I don't even think I'm gonna get a motorcycle without crash bars, because I think it's just smart. And when Elise was test riding it, she was trying to do an advanced maneuver, like in her second time writing this. And she tipped it over, not very dramatic, you know, uh, when she was at a turn, and again, we actually went home and we touched it with black paint and you can't even tell. So crash bars for the win. Really want to tell people that that's awesome. Uh, one of the things I did, I think I talked about it in the first video, is I didn't know how to fill the tank. So, you know, you have to put the nozzle all the way in. There's like a two part to this and I, I put gas all over this and that wasn't, that wasn't fun. Um, and one of the things I do constantly is that, pops open. So one of my checks now, whenever I'm riding my motorcycle, is to make sure that this is closed. Because I do this, and sometimes it's not closed. Like, it, I think it's closed, and then it'll pop open when I'm riding, and that's not good. So, see, just like that. Now that's locked in. You know, when I'm riding my bike, I see all these people with their Harleys, and they're so freaking loud. You know, they've got the Screaming Eagle exhaust, and I'm just like, ah, I'm okay with my exhaust. I, I mean, I think it's loud enough. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind. One of my dream bikes is the SVOST, and I think the Screaming Eagle pipes come on it. I know there's other better pipes people talk about, but I'm just saying exhaust is not really in my mind right now. I have a rattle going on here. I mean, I've disassembled the headlights and put them back together. I've looked at other stuff to try to see. I've looked at everything. You know, in the Army, they always say touch bolts. Make sure that they're not loose because they look like they're tight. The dealership did the thousand mile service and apparently they're supposed to go through that. So now we're going to talk about that. So I love my Harley. 
I bought my Harley and we wanted to buy a bike for my wife. And most likely it would be cool to get two Harleys, but it was kind of smart that we bought one to see how that experience was. We bought it brand new and there was a lot of hiccups along the way that actually soured me. Like I am literally right on the fence how I feel about my experience. A, I love the bike. I've enjoyed it. I've, I really like the way it looks. I've enjoyed the riding experience. But the corporate experience has not been ideal. Uh, to give you an example, when we were buying this, um, you know, a lot was going on. We never bought a motorcycle, it was brand new. And when we got to the finance office, they asked us, they're like, oh, so you opted to get the service plan. And we never, we never discussed that. We never talked about that. We never even, nothing. And, and, and the lady was like, oh, yeah, I've been talking to my guys about that. You know, they got to kind of need to stop doing that, you know, putting the service plan in the price of the bike. So we had that removed. Luckily, the finance manager, or I don't know what her title was, but she was forthright and she told us, like, if you guys don't want that, well, let's remove that. So they removed that. I was okay with that. And then, um, and I knew that the thousand mile service was going to be expensive. Um, and I was kind of dreading that because. You know, like it's a lot of money and are they going to do everything that the checklist says? You don't know, right? So I took it in there and I also had them look at an issue where the bike went into limp mode and it was having an issue. Like once it went in limp mode, it like actually went, uh, the power was cut off and I was at a turn. A little sketchy. I told them about that. I also told them I made a video about it and people were watching that video a lot and saying that they had the same issue. And I kind of felt like they listened to my concerns but at the same time, they weren't acknowledging that it was a real big issue. They came back and said that the harness to the throttle body, the pins were not seated all the way and that they fixed that. So I haven't had an issue with the bike. That only happened one time, but of course it's a little sketchy, you know, get a bunch of check engine lights on a brand new bike, right? Um, but I know stuff happens, it's a machine, but then I pay, you know, they gave me a small discount. I paid $500 for a thousand mile service. But when I got the bike back, I parked it in the garage and then I came back and there was oil. I wouldn't say a lot, but there was like tablespoons of oil on the, on the ground kind of around the bike. And I was like, what the, what the hell is going on? So I look underneath the bike and the whole bike is just drenched with oil. Like where they filled the oil up, they just let it come down through the side of the engine. I sent an email to Harley and they said they apologized. They offered me a, a car wash or whatever, or a bike wash, but as you can tell, my bike's brand new. I don't, and plus I'm not gonna let no one touch this. So, um, so yeah, now I'm at the point where I could do all the service myself because that thousand, thousand mile warranty was the most important thing. But when I weigh everything out, if I remove that part out of it, I could actually say that I really like the Harley motorcycle. Like I love, riding it. I love the experience. I love enjoying it. I really think that when it comes to that dealership experience, that's the only thing that kind of took away from my experience so far. So uh, again, the people there are nice. I, I've got a lot of love for every, there's a lot of good people there who smile at me, welcome, been helpful with the gear side. There's been a guy there who's really nice at the service part, but I love riding. Like, I am crazy about it. I, if I stay safe and everything goes well, I plan to have a lot of bikes. And uh, I actually plan to try out some sport bikes. I was at a dealership here and I was looking at a Suzuki and I was like, oh, this thing looks amazing. So riding itself, I am crazy about it. I love it. There's nothing like it. I am obsessed with it. It is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And I'm kind of glad I did it later on because I feel I'm a little more mature because again, these things are amazing, but you kind of got to be a little smart, right? That, that's how, that's why I tell myself. But at the end of the day, I'm just crazy about it. And uh, Elise is going to join me in the journey. We're still going through her journey. Hers is a little slower. She's taking her time, but hopefully we get to the point where we get to ride together to certain destinations. And that's going to be really cool. It's going to be a dream. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. We really appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you feel like it. You guys take care, ride safe, and we'll talk to you soon.